friends and welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. The Mindful Making channel is all about yarn and about knitting and about the joys of making things with our hands and the grounding and calmness that making brings. Welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. Here we talk about yarn and we talk mainly about knitting, we talk about making and we talk about and share the joys that making with our hands uh, give us and the calmness and sense of grounding that we feel when we are making with, with yarn and with our hands. So welcome to episode number 40. So it's a bit of a special episode and we will celebrate the soon to come release of the latest of my knitting patterns, which is the top that I'm wearing. You can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram and I am Mindful Making a You on Ravelry. I have a website called mindfulmaking.com.au so go there to sign up for the mailing list that give you some advantages you know to hear more about what is happening behind the scenes um, and advantages i will talk about a bit later but you have landed here in my craft room which is in hornsby heights located in hornsby heights north of sydney my name is jane I'm Danish, but we have lived in Australia for the last almost 10 years. So welcome. I hope you have your project ready, cup of coffee, tea or wine or what you prefer, and that you would enjoy the next half hour or so with me and um, your project. This tea we talked about in the last episode number 39 as well. And in that episode, I called for name suggestions. Many of you provided your beautiful, um, innovative, inventive suggestions. Loved them all. They were excellent, all of them. But I chose one of the names, and one of you are then one of you is then the winner of a free pattern and the name that is chosen is <laughs> Breezy Summer Tea and it was suggested by <laughs> Congratulations, send me your information about your email address and your Ravelry name and I'll make sure that you get a free copy of the pattern when it's released on uh, well it's planned to be released on the 25th of May so just around the corner the testers have been working through the pattern they they loved the project and that the light fabric that working with a lace weight yarn gives so the breezy summer tea is worked in the round it's worked top down it's knitting 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 i have worked size three so this is the size that i'm wearing i could get this size in one skein of yarn but it was, you know, there's only 25 centimeters left of that yarn. So it is a bit of playing yarn chicken towards the end. Um, so if you want to be sure, uh, size one, maybe size two can get away with one skein of 800 meters of yarn. The larger sizes would uh, take more yarn. The pattern is designed for a four inches ease, so 10 centimeters of ease around the bust, no waist shaping, so it just goes straight down. And some of the tester says it almost looked like a bit of an A line. Um, it has 
is a little detail at the neckline. The pattern has suggestions for uh, either one by one ribbing edge at the sleeves and at the hem, or you can repeat this detail at the um, at the sleeves and, and hem as well. A lot of the testers did that and they liked the look of that too. The pattern is available in sizes, in seven sizes, from a 34, 36 inch bust to a 56, 58 -ish inch um, sort of finished measurement. So I hope you will find um, a size that is suitable for you. If you want to be the first to know when it's released and if you want to get the chance of using a discount code, sign up on the mailing list on mindfulmaking.com.au because a um, sort of release celebration and party and a bit of discount code will be uh, provided to mailing list subscribers. So uh, if you are interested, um, head over to the webpage as soon as this uh, podcast is over, it's finished and sign up. Let me insert a short little video of me wearing the breezy summer tea so you can see how beautiful it is. The yarn that I have used for this sample, it is a lace weight yarn. It runs 800 meters per 100 gram. It is a beautiful blend of a high, a bit, or high quality, very fine merino, 55% and 45% silk. It is hand dyed by um, Glen Heaven Knits and you can find more of her yarns in her shop. Or when you go to Ravelry, you can see other suggestions for yarn choices that my testers uh, have used. That will probably be available around the release date, so the 25th of May. So have a look and see other options for yarn. But maybe you have this uh, lace weight yarn sitting in your stash and you don't know what to use it for, maybe this is an option for you. So this is celebration of the summer, the summer breeze, no, the breezy summer tea. I hope you'll enjoy it and um, enjoy knitting it and even more important, enjoy wearing a very light um, summer top. Beyond the celebration of, of, of this top, the episode today will feature three finished objects. One you have seen last in the last episode as well and uh, then a few projects on the needle. So let's dig in. The first finished object that I will talk to you about today is the sweater that I knitted for my husband. We talked about it in the last episode as well, but here it is. It is, the design is called Baseball Jersey and it's from a, a knitting book called Knit That Men Wants. It is a um, saddle shoulder construction, plain stockinette, 
in uh, the yarn I've used is holds super soft in the color which I can't remember heather something vintage heather it's a beautiful blue hopefully you can see that beautiful sort of mix of blue and black And why I'm calling it a finished object this time around as well is because I had to redo the neckline and I did it twice. So now I have tried to increase um, the height of the um, saddle shoulder panel towards the back to give it a bit more room towards the front. I am still unsure whether this works um, because my husband hasn't tried it on with, with the new neckline. And to be honest, uh, next time I'm doing a saddle shoulder garment, I will do it top down and it won't be from this pattern because although um, the pattern is fine, it's just uh, there is no explanation of that saddle shoulder sewing mechanism or sewing construction so you sew you work you work the uh, body front and back bottom up in two pieces basically two squares and then uh, knitting the sleeves bottom up as well and then moving up here um, across the shoulders and then seaming in the sleeves towards the end so there's a lot of seaming and and I found the the detail on on this saddle shoulder very confusing and it didn't work but let's see uh, I love the color I love the fabric it's a warm soft but still have a bit of that woolly uh, rust rustic wool um, feel to it I knitted this on a 3.75 millimeter needle and it's just one strand of super soft yarn which is a light fingering weight but this is the baseball jersey for my husband the first finished object the second finished object that I want to share with you today is another summer top. I can't remember if I had started it the last in the last episode or it was dream knitting. I might have cast it on at that time. But I have finished the stable linen summer top or the stable linen top uh, designed by Hoki Locatelli. This is worked in a beautiful drapey yarn, which is a mixture of uh, cotton, cashmere and silk. Beautifully soft and a beautiful shine to it. The top is worked um, top down, starting at the, um, at the back, working to then to the armhole shaping and then moving on to the front and then gathered in the round, finishing off with a one by one ribbing hem. And it feet, it's, it's a, a simple stockinette um, fabric and then it has this very beautiful, subtle detail in, in the middle of the back and the front. Again, I didn't swatch and don't be inspired by that. Do your swatching um, and not do, as, do it as me where this turned out as well to be too small for me. So my stitch gate is 24 stitches while the pattern is 21 stitches. So of course it was too small. but. This will be become a beautiful gift for something, someone special. 
So I will wrap it nicely with some fine paper and uh, it will become a beautiful gift. But I wanted one myself, a top myself, so I needed one more. So here is today's third finished object. This is then a the same stable linen top, same yarn, but I went up two sizes, I think. So this is actually the size for a 48 inch bust measurement and I am a 40-42 and I also worked this on a bigger needle so this is worked on a, a four millimeter needle this work this fits me perfectly and I love again the fabric of, of this uh, top so if we just compare the two If that even shows up on the camera. Yeah, there are a few inches difference in the um, at the bust uh, circumference and also on the length. So two, two tops, two identical tops, you could call them twin tops. Um, they have been washed and blocked and that just settles the stitches beautifully. Yeah, so uh, that were the three finished objects for this episode. Let me just find my little uh, knitting journal to see the amount of yarn that went into both of those tops. Let's just have a look at April as noted in my knitting journal and as you can see this is a multi-year journal. So if we look at the uh, stable linen top number one and I it weighs 102 grams so 408 meters and I knitted that on a 3.75 millimeter. It was uh, intended to be the 40 inch bust and the finished measurements uh, you can see here. So the bust is 80 centimeters in circumference. I think we have number two here on the second page, finished the 7th of May. It's a pretty quick knit. And uh, this time I chose then to make the size 44 inch bust and the gauge 24 stitches um, and the pattern says 21. I went up a needle size, so on a four millimeter needle, and I used 124 grams for this uh, top, and the bar finished bust measurements is uh, 90 centimeters, which fits me very well. If we then try to find the status of April, so in April, uh, I finished one sweater. So that's the uh, husband's um, baseball jersey and then one top, which is then the first of the stable linen top in April because the second one is in May. And the total of knitted meters in April is 1,993 meters. Um, Soon we will have the uh, calculations for May. But this is the status so far. And then let's move on to what is on my needles. So I have, and I've shown you before, beautiful yarn that I bought from Union Fiber in New Zealand. It's a beautiful green um, and you can see it here. Undertones of brassy,
green and then a few sort of darker speckles in between. This is a sport weight yarn. It's a merino superwash, 300 meters per 100 gram, and the color is called Bygone. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn. And uh, this wanted to be something with cables. So here is a A new design that will come up eventually, that will be ava available eventually. I am unsure how the, the color shows up on the screen. I can only imagine that it can't um, show the, the color as beautiful as it is in real, in reality. It's deep, deep, green, black, and then, you know, subtle tonal um, across coloring across the yarn. I have chosen to, the cable will sit uh, down the front. It is a stocking at back and it's a boxy uh, drop shoulder construction. I have loved working on this project because the yarn is delicious, it's beautiful, um, love the cable, but it becomes too wide and I think this yarn It becomes a bit too heavy for a um, boxy drop shoulder garment. I have decided that I will rip it all back and it will um, become a more fitted garment, um, not that much ease and possibly a cardigan, but still with cables. I want to create a top down, so I, um, I will find another cabling, beautiful cable pattern for it. So one day a pattern will be there and I will show you next time, maybe, or when I get to it, what it wants to become. Loved and I still love this yarn, so I'm just happy that I can knit with it again. Also, I was running out of yarn, so hopefully by reducing the ease, I can get a at least a three quarter length uh, sleeves um, with the four skeins that I have, so that's 1200 meters. Fingers crossed that um, it's enough. So what will happen to this project, you can see here. Well, I don't know, maybe I should just leave it as is. But otherwise, what I was, <laughs> I think I might just leave it as is, I don't. Um, I don't want to rip it apart yet, mm, but it is too big though. Look, Oop. okay, I'll just do a tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Boop, 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 boop. Yep. I do, however, love the cable um, um, up the front. So I have decided to redo 
what you just saw in another yarn. I just started today here. This is a mix of um, Holst Super Soft and Titicaca, which is a 100% alpaca yarn. So I have just started the uh, ribbing, the hem, on the front or the back and then do a second one for a split hem and then I will start the same, basically the same as I did for the green jumper. I think this will suit the shape and the weight better. The colors that I am using and the yarns are um, these two. This is called cinnamon. This is called, I can't remember. No, that's not what it's called. <laughs> called. <laughs> it is called crown. And together it becomes a beautiful mild fabric. And I will keep you posted how this is progressing. I can't wait to start knitting the cables again. So much fun. It's worked bottom up. Um, and then it will have shoulder, uh, short row shaping for the shoulders. And I also intend to do short rows on the top of the sleeve. Just, um, just a few, few rows of short row shaping for the sleeve. You might recognize this yarn because it is used in um, the gum nut tea which we also talked about uh, in the last episode. This is the next design of mine um, that is coming out and it is being tech edited at the moment and hopefully the test will open in a week or sort of in a week or two, sort of in the last half part towards the end of May. If you are keen to test the Gumnut Tea, also sign up for um, the newsletter on mindfulmaking.com.au because that is where the test description and call for testers will be announced. This is worked in a um, fingering weight yarn. It is, I think this is 400 meters per 100 grams, so a lot of yarns could be used for this tea. And you can then go into your leftover yarns to find contrast color for this color work in the, um, in the yoke. Here, the colors that I have chosen is the, uh, the cinnamon super soft held, to, held double the first three rows here and then the combination of of the super soft and the um, alpaca yarn as you as you just saw and then just two double stranded the alpaca color here and you you can choose you know it could be completely different it could be the same or it could be like a, a gradient like i have chosen for mine and then in this top, the main color is a, uh, a hand dyed, botanical hand dyed by um, Carola Down Under. It's a mix of cotton and bamboo. If you are curious about details of the yarn that I've used and links for patterns, Go into the description box below and you will find the direct link to the show notes which are stored on my website. 
So you can find all the details by going there. That is basically what I had for you today. Uh, and now it is also getting darker outside. So it's about time that I finish this video. And I hope you have had a good time with me and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. If you like uh, this podcast and like the channel, please give it a thumbs up, send a comment and maybe also click the notification bell so you'll be notified when there is a new episode up. Thank you so much for watching and um, I hope you are well and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Bye bye.